Okay? Ah, uh, okay. You hear my booming baritone now. So I'm Alistair McLean, the Executive Director of Net Zero Atlantic. Thank you all for your time today uh, to learn about the enabling conditions of Atlantic Canada. I know it's been a busy two days, so uh, we'll try to pop through this with a certain amount of interest. Net Zero Atlantic is an independent, not-for-profit research association uh, based in Halifax, and our interest is helping to contribute to the path to net zero in Atlantic Canada. So that's the four provinces east of Quebec. What we try to do is identify a knowledge gap on the path to net zero, assemble bespoke teams of academics, industry, civil society, First Nations government to create an action plan to solve that knowledge gap, raise funds, execute the project, and then move on to the next one. We try to do our work in sort of four classes. Uh, we, we lead applied science, applied research. We'll talk about, about more of that in a bit. We contribute to projects that could be pilot projects or demonstration projects for a new technology that could contribute to a net zero solution. Uh, we provide credible and objective data into the public domain so uh, people can be better informed when they're making decisions or participating in discussions about how do we get to, to net zero. And then finally, we provide services that to innovative small companies that might need some help to pursue their game plan to, to commercialization. Clearly, net zero Atlantic, or sorry, net zero is a broad term. And so when we think of the contributing ideas or research themes that are part of that, we've got them in four sets, as you can see here. Uh, electricity and clean fuels, which we'll talk, of course, about hydrogen a bit more shortly. Uh, people and knowledge. I always like to top a moment and say, you know, we, we tend to be technology-driven people, thinking technology is going to solve our solutions here, but we can't ever forget about the human element. You know, we've got to be sure we're bringing society along with us, and we have to encourage people to make different decisions in their daily lives if we're going to get to net zero. Uh, carbon management, and then also we do some work with innovation. So we're, we're net zero Atlantic, because we believe that for some of the challenges to get to net zero, we need to have a, a regional response. Uh, so the province of Newfoundland, Labrador, PEI, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia, Collectively, there are going to be cases where it's best for us to work together on a solution. But at the same time, acting locally is always valuable. So there will be cases where it makes sense for us to be working on a project, perhaps in one province, and with luck that might have something to learn which we can help share with people in other provinces. For the purposes of this talk today, I'm going to focus on some of the work that we've done more so in Nova Scotia than the other provinces. So we think about innovation to start with and how to be doing to help that. Uh, when we look, think of, I, I mentioned knowledge gaps, we looked at the province of Nova Scotia and they created a very credible game plan to probably get 80, 85% of the way to net zero using existing technologies, all good. But we saw a gap. We couldn't see how they're gonna get to zero. So we proposed a, a, a series of research and development calls to attract good thinking to try to perhaps come up with new technologies, new methodologies that if we start now in 10 or 15 years time where they're necessary to take the last piece of carbon out of the economy, they're commercially ready to go. And so the province of Nova Scotia uh, contributed $3 million uh, in their first segment to this program. Uh, the, the governor of New Brunswick has also contributed to it through the New Brunswick Innovation Foundation. Two principal streams with the research. The first one is we're trying to encourage very early stage conceptual thinking. You know, the, the crazy guy in the tin hat type thinking we're looking for here. We want to give people tens of thousands of dollars so they can just get started on something and see if we can create some interest to move that forward. So that's sort of made in region ideas. The second stream, which may be of interest to technology providers here in Europe, is we want to encourage Nova Scotians and people from New Brunswick to look around the world for emerging technologies that might help in our region. And then we'll provide funding to encourage them to, to do feasibility studies to bring that into the region. Some of the hydrogen related projects that we funded recently, uh, grouped in three sections from the hydrogen production perspective here, uh, you know, using sunlight to, to create hydrogen and also uh, degrade plastic. Uh, that's Dasog in, in Nova Scotia. Uh, using heterogeneous nanocomposites to produce hydrogen. 
and then leak detection, uh, high, high performance sensors for transportation and just applications. You may, heard, uh, you, you may have heard a presentation from my colleague at the back of the room here a bit earlier today, and then also some optical technology for visible detection of hydrogen. And then applications, of course, producing hydrogen is one thing. We've got to be sure we understand how we can use it well. Uh, so here we have a few cases, uh, direct contact, uh, water heating for the agricultural sector. And we all know that the agricultural sector might be the most difficult sector for us to decarbonize. So we're going to win that one with many small solutions. Uh, direct air caption, capture using green ammonia and then uh, a micro combined heat and power unit. So uh, one of the other things we do, you know, we, we, we like to think we can focus on collaboration when we do our work. So here, here are sort of four sets of work that we do when we're trying to think about creating uh, a hydrogen ecosystem in Atlantic Canada, Nova Scotia, Atlantic Canada, the Atlantic Hydrogen Alliance, the research clusters, use cases and hubs, and then again, the idea of putting helpful information to the public domain. So Net Zero Atlantic helped create the Atlantic Hydrogen Alliance in October 2021. Its purpose was to help identify and collect the organizations who have an interest in creating a hydrogen ecosystem in Atlantic Canada. Uh, now we're, you know, a few years later, we're at 90 members. And you can see that includes consumers, producers, professional services, technology developers, academics, and utilities. So we really have all parts of the economy which are going to be essential to produce hydrogen, but also to bring it into the economy. This is a busy slide. This is the academic slide, the research slide. Uh, for our, the, the, the research work in Atlantic Canada, is we're, we're lucky that we have uh, 14 universities, five community colleges, and 10,000 researchers. So there's an enormous asset to draw on there to work on some of the important problems in hydrogen. And you can see this matrix here on, on, on the vertical axis. You've got the supply chain. And then again, you can see the research here on the human element. Then across the top, we go from the start of the supply cycle from primary energy supply through to production, packaging, storage, distribution, and ultimately to the end use. So th this is a slide from Dalhousie University, one of the you know, significant leading comprehensive universities in Atlantic Canada, in fact, in Canada. And this is the type of clustering that we can pull together to help projects you know, reduce costs, increase the sustainability of their production. This, is an, this, is, this slide is from the Port of Halifax. This is an example of a project being developed to demonstrate not just the use of hydrogen, but how hydrogen can work with electricity in, in an integrated fashion to decarbonize an essential part of our economy. You know, we all know that ports, the vast majority of goods around the world are traveling through ports. They're essential economic engine. And so the decarbonization of ports is going to be essential. So what you see here is uh, a, a cartoon of the city of Halifax. In, in the bottom right corner, you have uh, the South End Terminal. Then the top left corner, you have a Fairview Cove Terminal. They're about eight kilometers apart, and there's probably 80,000 people living in the metropolitan area between the two. And what you can see in the graph here is that the, the concept here is is got four components. You know, some renewable energy generation, which it could be used for shore power or something like that. Uh, there's green vessel hosting and bunkering. The Halifax today has twice weekly uh, trade with the, city, with the port of Hamburg, uh, an excellent opportunity for us to create a green corridor where there could be bunkering of alternative green fuels in Halifax and again in Hamburg. Uh, there will also bunkering requirements will be needed for the, the, the Canadian Navy, the National uh, Atlantic Fleet is in Halifax. There's other commercial opportunities. So there'll be a great need for bunkering of green fuels. Electrification will be an important part of the solution as well. I mean, we know that hydrogen can't solve all our troubles. The key here is to, again, to demonstrate the successful integration of hydrogen with electricity into a crucial commercial operation. And this is an example of some of the insights that Net Geo Atlantic helped create. Uh, this is a study that we commissioned to look at the, the feasibility of hydrogen in New, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and PEI. On the left-hand side, you have the incremental case, so a modest introduction of hydrogen into the economy. And on the right-hand side, 
you have the transformative case, which is a much more aggressive assumption. You can see that the significant difference between the two is that in the transformative case, hydrogen is being used as an energy storage solution for seasonal storage variability. With that solution, about 20% of the energy requirement would, would come from hydrogen. In the more modest case, incremental, it's about 9 or 10%. But in either case, if you look at the absolute values on the left-hand scale, the, the, the potential market for hydrogen, hydrogen projects in Atlantic Canada is quite modest. So this is another study. This one is, was uh, uh, supported by the government of Nova Scotia, and, and it's looking at the core. It's an example of a socioeconomic study for a, a, a typical 500 megawatt electrolysis-driven export project. Uh, and what you can see, the, the ones we picked here, you've got full-time equivalent jobs. This is during the construction phase. This is an average construction year. It assumes a six-year project to build a facility. You can see it's about 1,000 jobs a year. And on the right-hand side, you've got, you've got the gross value add to so the economic benefit each year of that construction, you know, over $100 million, $140 million each year. You know, clearly, for these types of projects, there are many different economic variables we, or measurements we could look at. This is just an example of that. The key message is these projects have tremendous economic, bring tremendous economic opportunity, of course, to a region. So with all that, that brings us back to Atlantic Canada again. So Net Zero Atlantic, through things like creating the, helping to create the AHA, uh, helping to work on hubs and use cases with the Port of Halifax, uh, helping to convene researchers to work on critical problems like cost reduction, sustainable supply. We're helping to create a hydrogen economy. In addition, many of you will have heard over the last few days that governments of Nova, Newfoundland and Labrador, of Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, and the government of Canada talking, articulating clearly their support for a hydrogen economy in Atlantic Canada. You've had pro the previous projects talked about some of the natural attributes in the region. So combined then, if, if one were an investor looking for an attractive return, or you're a customer of hydrogen products looking for a viable supply, or you might be a business looking just to, do, just to have a business opportunity, the combination means if you choose a project in Atlantic Canada to do business with, you're choosing to work in a region that in a few years' time, as you can see by the schedule here, is going to be one of the dominant hydrogen supplies in the world. Thanks very much for your time and your attention.